Commissioner. And House Republicans are rolling out their fiscal cliff counteroffer to the White House. It includes $800 billion in new tax revenue. That is roughly half of what the president was aiming for. $300 billion in discretionary spending cuts. $900 billion in mandatory spending cuts. Now the White House responding just moments ago saying, quote, the Republican letter released today does not meet the test of balance. So they don't like it. I'm joined by Dan Mitchell from the Cato Institute for more on this. Dan, what do you think? I mean, these are a lot of things to occur just in the past few hours here. Do you feel like there's progress being made? There's progress, but progress in the wrong direction. The number one thing to understand is that already, even if all the tax cuts were made permanent, tax revenues projected to grow by about 6.2 percent a year. So what they're really debating about is how much should it grow even faster than that in order to enable bigger government. 100 percent of our fiscal problem is on the spending side. Obama's being very inflexible on that. Republicans, I'm afraid, are going to get taken to the cleaners, just, just as what happened in 1990 with uh, Read My Lips. So would you rather we went over the fiscal cliff? Compared to what Obama's talking about, the fiscal cliff might be better because Obama not only wants all the soak the rich tax increases uh, that would automatically happen, he then wants additional taxes on top of that that would be very bad for American competitiveness. We don't want to send jobs to China and India, but it's almost as if Obama wants to do that. And at least if we went over the cliff, we would get the sequester, which is that budget wonk term for automatic reductions in the growth of spending. No, so absolutely. But, Dan, I'm not sure Republicans are giving in as much as you think. I mean, when you drill down on the details, as soon as I saw this $800 billion in new tax revenue, my immediate question was, so did they give in on the point of marginal rates? And from the language, it doesn't look like it. I mean, they're saying a more, you know, a tax code that, you know, basically closes loopholes. They, they employ all the euphemisms we've been using to say you're going to get rid of deductions. But it sounds like that's where the $800 billion in new revenue is coming from, that they didn't give on marginal rates at all. Well, that's good news, but it's only good news in the sense that we're not traveling as fast in the wrong direction. You're still talking about giving more money to the least competent people in America, the politicians in Washington. You're talking about giving them that extra money so that they can have bigger government. So, yes, the fact that they're taking it, taking that money from us in a less bad way, I suppose that's good news, but we are still taking one step after another in the wrong direction. And at the end of that journey, the destination is Greece or Spain or Italy. Right. We have to figure out how to get control of entitlements, and the White House refuses to have an adult conversation well, about that. Neither of these proposals, I mean, neither side gets us really any closer to closing this enormous gap that you're talking about. I mean, I, I say it over and over again, but if, if this were your household and your bills were so far out of line with what your revenue was, you know, you, you'd get very serious very quickly, and these people seem to not do that. But for the Republicans, is it looking more and more palatable to just go flying off the cliff at this point? It depends on how dogmatic Obama is. I mean, this is sort of like you're selling a car on Craigslist, and you put it up for 5000 but you really take 4500 The other guy comes in, he offers you 4000 Some of this is just classic negotiating. Uh, but... We have to be serious. This isn't just a, a game. We're not playing yeah. poker, you know, on a Thursday night. Uh, if we don't fix our fiscal problem, which, by the way, to give Republicans credit, I don't want to just be attacking them, they passed the Ryan budget earlier this year and last year, and that actually does contain real entitlement reform. On the other hand... But it the, didn't the, go anywhere from there. You, you know, say that this is classic negotiation, and I think a lot of us think that from the sidelines, that the two sides are so far apart, and that if you just split the difference and cut in the middle, that's where we're going to end up. Do you believe that, and what does that make the final destination? If I had to predict, yes, they're going to cut the baby in half. The problem is... Cutting the babies in half uh, is no fun if you're the baby. And the American taxpayer is the baby in this analogy right here. So we're going to get some agreement where I bet marginal tax rates do go up. The total cost of government will go up and we'll take a step closer to yeah. becoming a failed European welfare state. It's just a question of how many years before we hit our own Greek-style fiscal collapse. No, you're absolutely right. And I'm glad you brought up the point of negotiation because we're going to do that next. Dan, thanks so much for coming Thank on you. the show. We appreciate it.